heights we shall behold as we walk on the streets of gold. But they can't start the celebration to lie. By his stripes we're healed. Oh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his stripes I'm healed. And by whose stripes? 39 major stripes upon Jesus' back. I'm healed. I stand on it. I'm healed. Oh, every pray. Every pray. Hallelujah. Every give him the glory this morning. Time to celebrate, and this coming Sunday, next Sunday, is going to be our 54th anniversary, and Carla and Redemption is going to be in the house to help us celebrate. You don't want to miss Carla and Redemption. It doesn't matter if people don't understand our joy. Amen. It's all right, because he's the one that gave it to us. Amen. I said this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. I said you ought to let out a scream right now. God, I thank you. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Glory to God. I know my God's going to fix it for you. Oh, yes, my God's going to fix it for you. celebrate as we begin to celebrate our 54th anniversary right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Next Sunday is Founders Day as we begin to honor my mom and my dad, which 54 years ago had a vision that people thought they were crazy. But since that 54 years, this gospel of Jesus Christ, because of this church, has been preached around this globe over and over again in over 50 countries around this world because of that ministry of my mom and dad. We're going to honor them next week. But more than that, we're going to celebrate what God's doing now. I'm telling you, it's going to be an awesome day next week right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. 54 years. Thank God for 54 years. You know why I know God's still alive? Because we're still going on. We're still going strong, still seeing people saved, healed, and delivered people, set free off of drugs. I had somebody just this last week say, Pastor, it's been two months, and I've been a hardcore drug addict for, for years and years, and it's been two months I've been free. I mean, it's only two months, but it's two months free. You don't make it a year until you make it past two months. You want to come and celebrate with us this coming Sunday, next Sunday. But today is going to be an awesome day here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been ministering on You Are a Diamond. Wow, it's been powerful. And today, I, God has a word for you. As we get ready for our celebration Sunday, we'll be back right after this. You don't want to miss Wednesday night, every Wednesday night at 7.30 in the Word with Pastor Steve. On Wednesday night, I have more time to slow down and to minister with the Word of God to you. You just need to be here. Also, we pray for the sick. Great things happen every Wednesday night. I'll see you in the Word with Pastor Steve on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss Friday morning. Miracle service. I will be praying for your family. 
I would be praying for sickness. Do you need a miracle in your life? Be with us Friday morning at 1030. Every Friday morning, God shows up in a great way. We'll see you here Friday morning for your miracle. Oh, you don't want to miss that Friday morning service every Friday morning. I remember my dad. That Friday morning service was his. He, he knew what he loved that Friday morning service and lives are still being touched every Friday morning. We're still preaching the way he preached, praying for people every Friday morning. It is a miracle service by a title, not only, but by actions. Make your plans to be with us here Friday morning. And for 54 years, the Paxton Revival Center Church has been known as God's hospital. I've seen God open blinded eyes, unstop the deaf ears and Oh, it's been a great time. I remember sitting here in this same office with my dad. And my dad was talking to me about Founders Day and, and about great things to happen. I just want to go back and remember a little bit of what he said at 6 this time. 6 p.m. It's a day that we're set aside to honor our pastor, Pastor Reverend Jimmy Dobbs. And, and, and also my mom. I know my mom's already gone to heaven. But you know, without my mom, then I would not be here today. This ministry would not be here today. My mom actually found the piece of property out here. Yes, she did. She found it. and uh, We had uh, $5,000, like $28. I had to borrow to get to go with the 5,000. Man wanted, uh, Brother Dave Hickelbar, Road Patrol, wanted nine, and I didn't have it. But God spoke to me, oh, through Mr. Hall at the bank, big money talks. I drove 120 miles to Valdosta. He quit making $1,000 bills, and I wanted big money. I went there and got five $1,000 bills, and my wife said, Give it all to God. And we did, and this is the outcome. Yeah, the seed, the seed that my mom and my dad planted, it was, my, it was my dad's retirement money. It was all the money he had, all the money he had to borrow $28 to get it just to buy the property. But look what has happened around the world since then. The sacrifice that my mom and my dad is still paying back to the kingdom of God today. And we ask you to come and be with us today. Today is going to be a very special day. Oh, I am what I am today because of my mother and the father, and most of all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. But my mother and my father taught me the ways of holiness and righteousness. I'm a child of God today because my mother and father lived that life in front of me. It is so important for mothers and fathers. If you want your children to turn out good, you got to be good. You want your children, well, pastor, I'm good, and my children, hold on. You may be doing everything right and your kids are not there. You know, all my family wasn't always right. But God turned it around. And even in my own family, God turned it around. And God brought them to the place where they are today. And that generation going down to the next generation. And this gospel that's been preached to this church is already to the fourth generation. Understand that Pastor Jimmy and Joyce Dobbs had a word from God, had a word from heaven. And because of that word, you know, the gospel is being carried down. Make your plans to be with us next week, but here today, heaven's going to shake into a live service at Amen. this time. The Bible tells us in the book of James chapter 1 and how that James was a servant of God. And, and there's one thing that I found out about God, that God will not put more upon you than you could bear. Somebody shout and say, I'm going to make it through. Shout, I'm going to make it through. Look at somebody say, I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it through. Don't worry about it. I'm going to make you through. I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it through. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good. James tells us in the book of James, in the book of James chapter 1, because James tells us how that we should react. How we should react. How we should react, how we should react when we go through trials and tribulations that we go through. He tells us how we should act. Here, what he tells us. Now, I'm going to teach you a little bit this morning. How to James 1 and 1. James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which were scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it joy. Oh, Lord, my God. Somebody shout joy. Count it joy when you fall into divers of temptation. Uh, here he says in the book of James chapter 1 and verse number 2, he said, count it joy. Look to somebody and say, get some joy. 
Get some joy, Brother Tommy. Get some joy. Get some joy. Get some joy. Get some joy. How are you going through some things, but get some joy. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. You may be seated. I'm going to continue your own reading. And the Bible says, and let patience have her perfect work, that we may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God that God will give it to him liberally and unbreakably not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that waves is like a wave of the sea, driven to winds and tossed. For let not a man think that he is uh, that think uh, that he shall receive anything of the Lord. The Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice. There he is rejoicing again. The brother of low degree that he may be exalted. But the rich that is he made low because of the flower of the grass of the flower of the grasses passes away. For the, soon is, the sun is soon uh, rises up and burneth up heat, but it withers the grass away and the, the flower therefore faileth, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. So also shall the rich man fade away. Blessed is the man whose endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised in him that love him. So starting with verse number two, it begins to teach this morning that we should have some joy when we go through some storms. He said, don't be surprised you got storms coming your way. Don't be surprised you got problems coming your way. And verse number three said, you're testing, uh, 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 you know, the testing, uh, you will, you know, it will produce you, uh, you know, some endurance in your life. So what happens when we, go through, when we go through storms? It's making us stronger. When we go through issues in our life, it's making us stronger. And they that are endured, I'm going somewhere with this this morning. I know that you say, Pastor, you you're supposed to be talking about we are a diamond hold on we're getting there because a diamond just don't come out of the ground and on your finger it just don't boom bam there it is I, I, I'm, I'm you know, starting this week As a matter of fact next Sunday morning I'm giving everybody a real genuine diamond not one of these fake diamonds but a real genuine not one of the seed tea, tie, tie, whatever the, the you know, diamonds that I'm giving every adult one a diamond why because in this building, we have some diamonds. And, and I want to compare next week. I know some of you look and say, Pastor, how in the world are you going to do that? You'll get here because you are a diamond. And I'm going to prove to you by the word of God that you're somebody special. He said that he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. Now go with me to the Second Corinthians chapter 6. I'm still just laying my foundation. Because here in Second Corinthians chapter 6, and verse number four, because when we go through some things in our life, what are we trying to do? We are trying to get the approval of God on our life. But before you get that approval of God on your life, uh, and, and you, and you, I've seen people, they say they bought these real expensive diamonds. They have the certificate to prove that it was real. It had the seal uh, yeah, that is a genuine diamond and it tells uh, it tells how big it is and how much it weighs Hear what the scripture says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 4 But in all things are proven ourselves as ministers of God We have to be approved Hold on you want to know why you're going through what you're going through It's approval stage it's approval stage. Here he says, how, how can we be approved? In much patience. Oh, we don't like patience. We want it right now. Especially us men, we want it right now. we got no patience whatsoever. I want it right now. But he said, in patience and afflictions and necessities and distresses and stripes and imprisonments and turmoils and laboring and watching and in fasting. Uh, so therefore, we're going to have to wait on some things. We're going to have to be patient in some things, and we're going to have to go through some things. If, as Paul said in Corinthians 6 and 4, that we're going to have the approval of God on our life, that we are not just a diamond, but that we are his diamond. He's the one that created us. Look like Christ, act like Christ, and I, I need to slow down because I, I, I want to go somewhere. It's verse number 9 of the same chapter. As known yet well known, as dying but behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful but yet we are still rejoicing. 
We are a sorrowful, but yet we're still rejoicing. We are poor, but made rich, have nothing, but uh, yet, uh, uh, yet that we possess everything. So we understand that uh, the Word of God teaches us that we're going to have to keep some joy while you're in the middle of the storm. In Hebrews chapter 12, it tells us that Jesus, the author and the finishers of our faith, who for the joy, he had joy while he was going through, why he knew what his purpose was. Whenever you're getting that approval for God, uh, for God to do something in your life, we have to go through some things. In Hebrews 10 and 35, he said, don't cast away the confidence that we have have which is a great reward that will be given back unto us for you have need of patience when we have patience we don't like having to wait on God we don't like God having to work things out we want it already done John on, on Jay Crouch sung a song if you never had a trial you would never know that God could bring them through it if you never had a problem you wouldn't know how big God is but if you ever have a storm in your life and God shows up, you can say, sure enough that there is a God. Sure enough there is a God. Sure enough that there is a God. Sure enough that the power of God. He said that you might have need of patience that after, 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 after that you've done the will of God. See, after that you followed what he asked you to be, that you might receive the promise. So we need to learn some patience and we need to learn some endurance while we're being trained and while we are going through the, uh, the approval process for God in our life. Luke 21 and 19 says, in your patience you possess your souls. In your patience, when we begin to wait upon it. And I, I just love it what J uh, you know, James said back to James, our text and chapter 1. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith. It work his patience. It's when you're going through, a, I'm waiting on God and, and my faith is being tested, my faith is being tried. See, God's already got it, already finished. He waiting on you to have faith that he can finish what you don't see he's already finished. He's waiting on you to see that he already done what he said he already done. And from the beginning of the thing, he already finished the end of it. But he's trying to get you to work through that. He said, verse 4 says, but let patience have her work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When we let God do what he wants to do in our life, here the scripture says, hallelujah, that we shall be perfect. Our mature is another word that we should be mature and that we shall be entire wanting nothing why because God's already taken care of it after that we've done the will of the father after we have learned some endurance after we've learned how to have some patience you want to be a diamond hold on diamonds are not just boom you may have a fake diamond that come out of a oven somewhere, but real diamonds how they are not just sitting on top of, of the ground to start with where they were formed at. Uh, real diamonds was formed, listen to this, 88 to 112 miles. 12, 112 miles beneath the surface. Uh, 88 miles. Here to the other side of Lake City. All the way to the beach and back. That's how far that a diamond makes. Well, I begin to ask the question. If diamonds were made so far up under the earth, how did they get out? It was through the, the uh, you know, the scientist says that it was the earthquakes. The vibration of the earth. And the vibration of the earth, which was what was real deep down inside, God was trying to get it to the top. And right now, you some of you feel like I've been 112 miles under the earth. I've been stepped on. I've been pushed around. I've been abused. I've been done wrong. Well, what's all the pain about? The pain is God is trying to get you out of the depths. He's trying to get you out of the gutter. He's trying to get you up so that he can polish you, so that he can make you what he said you're going to be. The book of Acts chapter 5 tells me of the church. The church... You know, they took the apostles and they locked them up in Acts chapter 5 and verse number 38. And, and, and verse number 9 and verse 39 it said, if it be of God, you can't stop it. I'm going to tell you right now, you can fight against somebody of God, but you can't stop it. The world in the past history has already proved. They tried to fight against Daniel, couldn't stop him. 
fight against Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego couldn't stop him. Try to fight against the children of God couldn't stop it. Do you think the devil's got any smarter today than he has 2,000 years ago? No, he still has the same tricks, but he's trying to get you to stop yourself. He's trying to get you to stop believing God. He's trying to get you. And the Bible said in verse number 40, and you know, they said and they agreed and they called the apostles and says, I want you to not speak about that name Jesus anymore. And the Bible says they beat them beat them in the presence of the council hear what he said verse 41 and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing oh rejoicing that they would count worthy to suffer shame for the name of oh i love preaching the word of god and remember next sunday is is a time to celebrate our 54th anniversary and carla and the redemption is going to be in the house oh hallelujah shall soon take place I've been invited by His grace as the angels are preparing for me to come they can march around the throne they can sing victory song they can start the celebration to rise As the master calls his children, come and die. Friends and loved ones, I know we'll see. I know that they'll be waiting for me. But they can't start the celebration till I get there. Come on and sing it for him. We'll crown him. Carlin Redemption is coming to help us celebrate right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church in uh, three awesome great services. Early worship next week so as we celebrate our 54th anniversary. Morning worship at 11 and 6 p.m. And she is staying over for a ladies meeting only, a ladies meeting only on Monday night. Oh, we're excited what God is doing right here with Carlin Redemption as we honor our founding pastor, Reverend in Jimmy Dawson. Get you. How many people, you might come to church uh, and put your feet under the pew, but the Holy Ghost will get under the pew. Uh, how many people are preaching, you can't run from God. Honey, when God calls you, the gifted calling of God uh, is without repentance. Uh, you might have used to have been saved. Uh, you went off someplace else uh, and backslid, uh, but God's married to a backslider. 
God or Jesus loves you and God cares somewhere down the stream of time or God's going to bring you back in. Brother, he'll call you once and if you'll come all right. If you don't, he'll call you twice and if you don't come, he'll call you three times and if you don't come, God will set your barley fields on fire and what God set your barley fields on fire, you might scream and cry but God will catch you. He'll run you down. Honey, you might have been a preacher of the gospel away from God. You better get your hand up to the plow. You might have been a Sunday school teacher once taught the word of God and cast out devils, but now you're backslid. Oh, God's calling you back. He's calling you back. He wants you to come home. The bride said, come. Oh, Jesus said, come. The lamb said, come. Let everything that thirsts come and drink of the rivers of waters of life freely. Can't you give the Lord a real a good cap over it. Oh, I'm just telling you, I love to hear that man preach. I learned faith sitting on this pew. As I began to talk to literally thousands of pastors all across America that was inspired because of the Paxson Revival Center Church. Hundreds of pastors said, I sat under the ministry in the Paxson Revival Center Church and I learned how to be evangelists. I learned how to pray for the sick. My faith was increased and we just thank God for Pastor Jimmy Dobbs for his ministry. And next Sunday is going to be an awesome time. You don't want to miss what God is doing right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. It is time for us to have church and make your plans to be with us. Carlin Redemption is going to be with us. I remember she'll be with us three services on Sunday and staying over for a ladies' meeting on Monday night. Until we see you in this great Holy Ghost service today or in that big celebration 54th years next Sunday right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. May God bless you be with our prayer.